Yes, yes, y'all. Chief Kamachi right there with the third lecture, and we got him on the phone right now. What up? Yo, Canada was good. Ha <laughs> ha, much respects for doing the interview, man. Thank you yeah, for... Yeah, no problem, bro. For taking the time out of your day to uh, to talk to us a little bit about you know the music that you got going because trust me man being being a fan of like real hip hop you know you bring that essence that realness you know what I mean I gotta say on the mic when I hear your style your flow the words that you talk about the knowledge that you're kicking you're you're definitely on that just like raw yeah, hip hop tip and I feel that no doubt, man. thanks man appreciate it yeah that's what I try to do you know what I mean try to try to try to do it the way that I learned it you know what I'm saying so you know I, I try to try to keep it try to keep it pure as possible you know especially right now with all the gimmicks and you know all the extraterrestrial effects that everybody got going on you know I try to keep it that raw 90s you know what I'm saying flavor that I came up on you know so that's pretty what's much up. where I be pulling from you know what I'm saying all the classics the legends you know what I'm sitting down creating <laughs> The forefathers, the architects, definitely you gotta gotta yeah. look look to those people. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, the anniversary of Biggie just passed, so R.I.P. Yeah, no doubt about it. One of the great, one of the great storytellers, raw lyricists, two at the same time. Yeah, man. You know, but that's the era, man. Early '90s, mid '90s. I mean, even some early 2000s, too. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of classic hip-hop came out. Some under the radar. You know, some we got a chance to put our fingers on. But, um, yeah, man, just, just trying to keep that sound alive, man. Get ready to drop the new album. Uh, I think it's April, April 29th when I drop Radio Raheem. Yes, so yes. That, that, that'll be my seventh studio album. That's big. That's big. People, People go and check that out. Yeah, man, definitely another banger, man, another 11 track banger. Um, just gearing up the videos and stuff right now um, for the for the project and stuff like that. So single probably be out like next week, something like that. I had a couple of little roadblocks here and there, but yeah, I think the single should be hitting the streets uh, next week. You should be able to uh, people will be, you know. Nice, nice, definitely. definitely. We'll, yeah, yeah. we'll grab it. We'll grab it. We'll give it some spins here. Yeah, yeah, y'all got to make sure you get a copy of it. Make sure you got it on deck. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, start sending the promo packs and stuff. I like, definitely have it. They definitely have it in you know, the bank for the people before it get out there. Yeah, so just really just gearing up for that, man. Getting ready to come up there. Canada, do the show in Guelph on the 15th. Um, it's going to be dope, man. I love coming up Canada. I've been up there about like three times. I've toured up there about three times so far man it's nice you know people up there real supportive and uh you know they come out man for the real hip-hop you can't really ask about so about more than that you know so i'm definitely looking forward to that I actually be leaving philly in a couple hours <laughs> making my way up there so <laughs> nice nice yeah yeah that's what's up that's what's up coming out from philly what's it, what's it been like you know coming from the philly hip-hop scene um, uh, you know, there's ups and there's downs, I guess, like any other city, you know. Philly is weird. I mean, it's a lot of talent in Philly, and it's a lot of unknown talent in Philly. So, I mean, mm-hmm. the people pretty much probably heard about 0.3% of what Philly actually got to offer as far as music is concerned, I don't think. I mean, nobody really knows. You just hear the people that you hear. But, I mean, there's so many artists here that is, I mean, it's, 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 an untapped, it's an untapped well, you know that uh, people haven't had a chance to, uh, they don't know, you know, for whatever reason, and it's still untapped. You know, it's like we get one artist every 12 years or something like that, that you know, to actually come out and break out and, and make some type of impact. So, I mean, it's real strange. I mean, to even be able to get out and travel around the world and stuff like that, it's just been a blessing in itself just coming from Philly because it's so hard. Mm-hmm. Not, as, not as hard as, you know, other places, but, you know, it's still a challenge, you know, and especially doing the kind of music that I do too, so... You know, we we grind hard. For sure. I always wonder, like, as a hip-hop artist myself, like, looking at different cities, you know what I mean, and wondering if where you're coming from really 
affects, you know, how much success that you're able to gain. Like you say, there's only, you know, one cat that gets noticed every 12 years in Philly, whereas people from like New York, it's like every single year there's cats coming out that are popping like huge, you know, places on the West Coast and stuff. They're, they're really popping. And then I think back to like people like Guru who like, you know, started out in, I think it was Boston and then moved up to New York to like link with them and then started blowing up bigger theirs and like thinking about other artists that have made that kind of similar move, even artists in Canada here that are from smaller cities and then move to to our large cities like Toronto um, and Vancouver and stuff like that and I'm just curious like w- what you think about that like you know what I mean like seeing seeing so many artists come up in the game do you think it really does affect like how how much yeah. you know success you're able to gain where you're where you're from yeah I, I mean yeah I think I mean like you know one thing like for instance with New York I mean, New York always got a plus because the business is just there. The yeah. business platform is there. So, you know, you're at you're, uh, Pinky's Reach or pretty much anybody in the, in the music business for the most part or somebody connected to somebody. Somebody knows somebody. Yeah. So, you know, that trek up the hill ain't, and as hard as being from other places and stuff. I think some areas, I mean, some areas you just benefit. I mean, just, you're just going to benefit from the demographics, I guess. Like you look out in the Midwest where... I mean, you, you see where Rhyme Sayers and them started at where they yes. were coming from, but but before that, you ain't hear nothing. There was nothing you know? from Minneapolis. It was so yeah. quiet. It was <laughs> crickets over there. You know, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you nobody from Minneapolis except that's them. what so, up. So I think you know one of the keys to a lot of their success was it was just them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing to do. So you know, once the momentum started to build up, and it was like you know, you know, we have to support them. Like this is it. It's nothing else. There's no other groups really that good, maybe. You know, it probably was. But it wasn't nobody on the radar. Yeah. You know, that was out there that was going around like they was doing, doing shows and stuff like that. You know, and it may be the same coming from a smaller city in Canada and then coming to a big city like Toronto mm-hmm. where you got access to more people, you know, than different. The people who need to hear you are a lot of times going to be in the big cities. Yeah. You know, I think so. I mean, you know, definitely I think it plays a part. It definitely plays a part in down south hip hop. You know, because it just it's a whole family thing down there. Besides, people really understand the kind of support and why a lot of artists as big as they are, but it's family oriented. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of it is not. Um, so it's not you know. It, it's, that's where a lot of the support comes from. Definitely, definitely. And you need that. And I know even yeah. even places like Kansas, you know, and stuff like that, where uh, strange yeah. music has been has been blowing yeah. up. Like they're they're even talking about how you know they're getting calls from la calls from new york from the major labels finding out what they're doing and stuff you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah so there's so many little pockets i mean you could be so big and nobody know who you are you know you'd be the biggest thing happening in your town and nobody will know especially down south and a lot of midwest like you could be so big nobody knows mm-hmm. you wouldn't have a yeah we have a clue yeah you wouldn't even have a clue so yeah definitely i think it definitely play a part definitely play a part you know, definitely, definitely plays a part in um, breaking ground, man. And them just having good music too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We ain't got no good music. You don't care where you're from. That's that's yeah. very true. Yeah, yeah. Good music according to what the people that are looking for are. You know what I'm saying? What they're checking for. It ain't got to be good to me, but to the people that is that's out, you know, scouting and stuff like that in these different areas of what they're looking for. As long as it's good to their standards, then you know, you, know, you can make something happen. You know, but uh, it's a different game, though, than how, you know, 10 years, five, just three years ago, is you know, it's just changing day by day. Yeah, you it's know? nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. You don't really know. You can't put your fingers on it and say, okay, if I do this and do that, that, you know, this is going to be a big record. If I go get Primo and have Primo do 20 tracks, this is going to be a classic. Not so. Mm-hmm. But Not that so. would be pretty dope if you did that. <laughs> yeah, it, would dope. it would be dope, but it ain't going to have the same effect that it had 10 years ago. No, no. The same effect that it would have had five years ago. You know, you could go get cameos from anybody right now. And, you know, when you look at the, the difference that it's making for, for people projects and stuff like that, it ain't making no difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of times... So, you know, the game is this, I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I just, you know, I just stick to my script, man. I don't know. I, and, and, and the crazy thing is the people who try to follow what's going on, they get lost in the sauce. You know, so many artists who came and they start trend hopping and, and jumping, you know, off, off the original music that people fell in love with them with, and then they don't know where to go because they don't know how to come back to where they was at before. 
Yeah. So I've seen a lot of. I came up with a lot of great artists, and you know, I honestly, say right now, a lot of them is whack. A lot of them is whack. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. A lot of them is yeah. A lot of them is whack because they they start trying to figure out. Oh, you know, I got to broaden my horizons. I have to figure out, you know, how to get more fans. If the people don't like you right now. They might not gonna like you later on. So if you just making a song to just get a certain group of people. You know, you're going to have to keep making those songs. Or eventually, when you get to the next project and you don't have that song, that group of people going to be gone. Yep. And then, as well as the original group of people who fell in love with you before you started doing that different stuff. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, I, I, see, I mean, I, I named 20, 30, I mean, so many artists that I know, they can't even, they can't figure out what to do right now because <laughs> they lost their momentum. When they had the momentum, they lost it because they start experimenting. Switching. Before they had, yeah, they start switching. Up. And there's nothing wrong with that. You want to grow as an artist, but... What I learned about fans, fans want the same thing over and over and over again. Just do it better. Mm -hmm. Just do it better than you did it the last time. You know, we would have loved to have four or five Illmatics in a row. <laughs> you know, just do people it keep talking about that. People keep talking about that. If if just Nas and, and you know and Primo hook back up and they did. Yeah, yeah, it's like just do it again, do it again, and just keep making it better. But do it again. It's like you know, a lot of times you lose your love for artists because they just went off on this run, and you're like, what are they doing? Like, I don't know him for rapping like this. Like, I love him for doing this. Why did he shoot to this? And a lot of times, the artists grow. So you can't fault the artist, but at the same time, don't fault the fans when the fans don't love none of this this new stuff that you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't love it. Don't blame them. Blame yourself because that's not what they originally started to like you for. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, and then the quality changes. You could be equally good doing the different stuff too, but it ain't going to have the same effect that it's going to have, you know, when you was doing, doing what you was doing, what made them go out and, buy the records and come to the concerts and stuff like that. They're gonna be looking like this is this guy. They're gonna look at a TV screen with a blank face. Like, what is this? What is this? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You know. And then you got some fans who try to make you know, like, oh, you know, it's like when Common came out with the Electric Circus. Nobody knew what in the world he was doing. <laughs> I mean, I, and I love Common. I hated that album, and I still hate it. Oh man. That's I hate, funny. I hate the record. I don't like not a song on the album. It was very it was weird. Record. It was a yeah, very wow. weird album. <laughs> the record is whack. Sex and sugar. Sugar for sex. Whack. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think it's just whack to me. Personally, it's just whack. It's a whack album. You know what I mean? For what I, I like comments. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, you know, this weird stuff is like, all right, cool. It's like tomorrow, Chief Kamachi drops some funny techno, you know what I'm saying, emo stuff on y'all. And I'm like, what is this guy doing? It's all over. <laughs> this is all over with, you know. Let me let me try some funny stuff tomorrow, and I come out, you know, with some funny looking shirts on and some stuff like that. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Well, I'll that, never be able to. Uh, yeah, I'll never be able to redeem myself. No, no, it goes back to what you're saying about the gimmicks. You know what I mean? Yeah, Nowadays, yeah. everybody's all about their gimmicks and stuff. And you, you know, at the end of the day. I think when you're saying when you're talking about these artists losing themselves and not knowing what to go back to, it's because when they're done finishing their songs, listening back to them and hearing the feedback and stuff, they're not satisfied because they're not satisfied with themselves. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, and they know it's a game. Yeah, and 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 I think that's that's a, a key issue with with people in general. And and people that emulate these types of of MCs that are out there, rappers, if you call them, you know what I mean, that are just that are c- falsely portraying this image that is not them. And then at the end of the day, they're just like, I, like I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah, yeah, they get lost in the sauce quick, and the music business as a whole gets you lost. And a lot of them they start switching up when they're not making no money. A lot mm-hmm. of them can't hang in there, so you know they'll start off with what they love to do, and then when that's not paying, then they figure that and this is this is the, the magic, this is the twist. Because well, one of the main things that artists do is they try to use other artists as a standard of measure for what they need to do as an artist. Yes, and you you can't yes. do that. You can't you can't say okay. Tell them um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a beat from I'm gonna get a, a stew bangers beat i'm gonna get um i'm gonna get a uh, white shadow on the cuts i'm gonna get a hook from i'm gonna get a hook from um let me get my homie dope nixon to do the hook and boom because they seen somebody else do that and it, and it was big so now they go and try to put the same formula together and they like yo it didn't work i, I got the same beat I, yo i got them on the cuts 
because it's not for you. That was their path. That was yes. for them. That was to open the door up for them. Tell so them. you can never look at another artist and say, well, I'm going to do what they did, and this is what's going to make me big. No, 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 no. Destiny has something else in store for you. Yes. And, you'll see, and, and you'll see a lot of artists that try to do it. You know, all the, the dudes have been trying to emulate Jedi for like the last 15 years. Nobody did it. <laughs> it. It's not going to work for you. Vinny can say whatever he want on the record. You can say whatever you want. He got a core fan base that's going to come and support it no matter what. You, you, most artists don't have that. So you can't look and say, okay, I'm going to go get 20 beats from their producer and pay all this bread. I'm going to get cameos from all the pharaohs, and this is going to be the biggest underground record in the history of hip-hop. Man, that's about 80% of the dudes you hear. <laughs> that's about 80% of the underground that try that in some shape or form. I'm going to get ill Bill. All right, who else is hot? All right, it's, it's only a group. It's like a select few. You can name them all, and they, we just get rotated. I'm a part of the group, too. It's like a certain group of them get rotated around. You know what I'm saying? But you, you are looking at what's going to make you successful and not what's making the other person successful. And that's just in real life, outside of music business, people do the same thing. Like, don't look and say, okay, this dude do heroin. He take one hit, and, you know, he's cool. He ain't been hooked. He's been doing it for 12 years. And mm -hmm. you go do it, and it's a done deal. Your job is done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your wife left you, your kid's gone, you know. So, and it's the same with the music. These guys, you're looking at what these guys are doing, and they figure, all right, it's going to work for them, it's going to work for me. And it don't, and they get frustrated. And the next thing you know, oh, hip-hop is not supporting us. Um, Y'all don't love real hip-hop. And then you hear that whole rant. No, they don't love your hip-hop. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people, when they, you know, they talk that they're not supporting, they're not supporting you. You can't speak for everybody else. There's a lot of guys that's doing pretty all right for themselves. You know what I'm saying? And on, the mu on the music side of things that I've never heard of in my life. So how are they doing it? How are they doing it? Somebody's buying the records, right? You know, so it it's not a, a one-size-fit-all type program. You know what I'm saying? You know, but people try to make it. They try to make it like it is. Yeah, man. They try to, yeah, they try to make it like it is. But that's the biggest mystery in the music business. That's what I. Follow. That's what I yeah, feel though. You just gotta stay original. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to follow nobody else fast. Like I don't care what nobody do. I do me. Yes. I don't care what producers are hot. Like I don't get in. Like I don't care who's the hottest producer or none of that. I right, with the beat is hot. You know, like third lecture is done by my man. He's from Canada. Boom. I never heard him do tracks for anybody. My man said he beats. I never heard him do tracks for anybody. He sent me the tracks. I listened, I was like, oh, this is hot. It wasn't about whether or not he was on 50 records with people. He was hot. That was mm -hmm. it to me. That's all that matters to me. Yeah. You know, so I don't, you know, and I've been cool doing that. It works for me. Other people might not work for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm just staying around, just staying true to myself, man. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I just do me, man. You can see, you see me on Facebook. I just do me. I don't really care what people have to say. You know, that's not... It don't affect my bottom line, you know. It's just a waste of energy on their part because I'm going to continue to do it. So, <laughs> you know. Yes, it's yes. Not, uh, so, you know, it's a funny game, man. It's a funny game. Funny it, game, but, um, hey, we in it, man, because we love to do it. It's the I passion. Know. It's the yeah, passion, man. man, for sure. It fuels fuels yeah. the craft. Yeah. You can tell. You can hear it in your voice. Yeah, man. You know, we do it. I've been rhyming for so long. It's like, you know, like I... I was I was in a studio and like uh, the way out my recording process is pretty funny because like I don't a lot of times I don't listen to the songs out front for a second. I need to get a Greyhound ticket. Hey, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times I'm not was in a store. A lot of times I don't use I don't even listen back to the song. Like I record a song in the headphones and send it right out to get mixed. Yeah, I don't even need to listen to it. That's how long I've been recording. Like I can lay a verse and don't listen to it back and send it out. I hear it when it's on the record because I know that it's right. You know, because that's how I work on perfecting my craft. So I'm still into the skill of, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, of being a lyricist and, and a one-take wonder and all that. I still I still enjoy the whole process, you know. I enjoy the whole process. Definitely. You know so, yeah, man. But yeah, man, y'all be on the lookout for the new Radio Raheem album. Be in stores April the 29th. Another banger. <laughs> that's work. Another that's banger. work. Definitely. Yeah, people yeah. got to recognize it, you know, to get to the level that you're at, to be touring around, to be working with the people that you've worked with and, you know, and to just and to be making this right now, your seventh, you know, album to come out. It, that's 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 big. And, you know, it takes a lot of work to get there. So people recognize yeah, yeah, that. You know? you gotta, yeah, you got to let it do it, man. 
the more that you, you do it, the better that you get. Yeah. And you're getting the, the tracks are, are so tight now that, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's, and then, you know, and I'm still growing as an artist, too. See, I, I and you know, even though I've been recording and stuff for so long and stuff like that, I still haven't reached, you know, I'm still just getting better every day. So it, it's always a constant, it's always a growth process. I mean, I guess for real MCs it is. We always try and push ourselves. Yes. It's never, you know what I'm saying? We always pushing ourselves. Yeah, no stop, no slacking. You can't, you can't, because when you get stagnant, that's when all of a sudden you're just like, what? Why did I put all that work in for? That's like working out and getting all flexed up, and then all of a sudden you stop working out and you're just like all flabby and stuff. You're like, what? What? Why did I even put in that time to work out? Greyhound chicken right here. Yeah, I'm getting here. Hold on one second, bro. Yeah, man. Today. That's what's up. Interview on the move, Chief Kamachi. Hey, just fast. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, man, I got to get ready to get off, man. I got to try to get myself ready so I can make it to you guys this week. <laughs> Word up, man. Well, much respects yeah, for, for nah, doing the no interview, Doug. Yeah, no problem, man. Check y'all out, man. The 15th Wealth at Squirrel Tooth. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, let's rock out, man. Merchandise on deck, you know. Come get your Radio Raheem shirts and... And the whole nine, man. I'll see y'all guys on Saturday night.